In our continuing series on solving sleep, we're looking at the steep health risks of sleep loss and dispelling those myths about catching those Z's. Joining us today is director of UCLA's Sleep Disorder Center, Dr. Alon Avedon. Thank you so much for being with us. Such an important topic. And while some people seem to thrive on a few hours of sleep, Others definitely need that full eight hours. Maybe we all do. So how much sleep do we really need, and how does that change with age? Hi, Lauren, and hi, Mark, and thanks so much for having me. And in, indeed, you are absolutely correct. Um, sleep need is, um, <clears throat> should be in the neighborhood of about seven to eight hours. In 2015, um, the National Sleep Foundation, among other organizations, uh, convened a task force looking at this very question. And we did determine that um, sleep need and sleep regularity is, are quite essential. They cannot be made up. They cannot be um, borrowed on certain days. Every one of us, whether we're 18 or 80, we need seven to eight hours of sleep on a regular basis. And of course, sleep uh, need increases from time of infancy all the way to childhood and adolescence. But after age 18, it's pretty much determined you need about seven to eight hours of sleep on a regular basis. So we, we have jobs that are pretty taxing on our bodies. We work overnight hours, very early hours uh, for some of us. Does a non-traditional sleep schedule always mean you're going to get worse sleep? What you're referring to, Mark, is, of course, the shift work schedule and, and nighttime um, uh, work when, when uh, one, our circadian rhythm is telling us to be asleep. And that, that can uh, be difficult to, uh, to address when uh, sleep during the day is a bit uh, difficult. So as long as one is not forgetting to then move the sleep time and ensuring that the sleep is protected, when you can get that sleep duration, then I think most people will agree that you're doing okay. However, if you are finding that you are, um, you need a, you need to take a break. You need to have a glass of caffeine because you're too sleepy to remain awake. That those are red flags. That definitely also when we're driving and we're dozing off at stoplights, those are red flags that we should always say. Uh, um, re review and determine if we're getting the seven to eight hours when we can take that sleep duration. It's a serious topic, but we were looking at footage of our early morning show anchors, you know, looking like they were dozing off. Those red flags are all <laughs> hitting us in the face all the time when we work these early hours. I'm sure a lot of our viewers do shift work too. Now, the reasons for avoiding that caffeine close to bed. That's obvious. It makes it tougher to sleep. But can a relaxing glass of wine interfere with sleep? Some people like to wind down that way. Of course, and and you know, and I all of my patients who come in with uh, insomnia do tell and reveal that they they like to have a glass of wine before bed because it uh, it is enticing. It's available. It makes you feel sleepy. It makes you relax. But you pay for it as the levels of alcohol drop as you as you fall asleep and the body metabolizes alcohol then you wake up and people wonder well what what is it that it worked so well in the beginning of the night then they have another glass of wine at two or three in the morning and then you develop a, a patient who uh, may have a glass of wine a, and a month later or two months later they may have a two or three glasses of wine because of that short half-life of alcohol and the fact that the body builds tolerance to it. So I would always urge people that instead of alcohol, talk to their family physicians because there are often um, safer and more effective ap approaches that uh, work on mindfulness, sleep hygiene, relaxation techniques, even lowering the, the temperature in a room to about 60 or 65 degrees is one very effective measure because we, we can all fall asleep and maintain sleep uh, more effectively when it's a bit cooler outside. So let, let's say someone's watching right now, they, they really do not get enough sleep. They don't believe they get enough sleep. So what are the long-term health risks of sleep deprivation? The long-term risk of sleep deprivation can be quite serious, from memory and cognitive disturbances to even a higher risk of um, uh, uh, neurodegenerative conditions because 
during the night, our body, our brain gets cleared of proteins and toxins and cellular metabolites through a system called the glymphatic system. Uh, and that uh, clearing uh, effect is exclusively at night. And you need seven to eight hours of sleep for the glymphatic system to work effectively. If you don't, those proteins end up clumping and aggregating and creating the building blocks of uh, neurodegeneration. So we're finding that sleep is not a passive process. It's a very active process where your body goes through rejuvenation, clearing of those proteins, abnormal sleep and sleep restriction is often associated with increased precipitation of these proteins in the brain. And when that happens, it induces inflammation and can be a risk factor for in the individuals who, who do have the genetics for Alzheimer's to have a more uh, uh, a, a quite more aggressive course of a, perhaps a cognitive and, and neurodegenerative changes. Sleep is also very important for immunity, especially now during the COVID-19 pandemic, is that uh, you need proper sleep for proper immune function, particularly after people receive the vaccine. And if you don't, you're running the risk of more infection and a high risk of fame perhaps not, not um, uh, doing well in terms of fighting infections. It's so important for so many reasons. Doctor, we appreciate you so much. Dr. Alan Avedon, thank you. And for more information on sleep, you can visit uclahealth.org slash sleep center.